Easter. Easter. Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter from the Krugers. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Happy Easter. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. UMC. <laughs> Good morning. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. Good morning and happy Easter from the Wednesday morning Wednesday Bible studies. Easter blessings. This is Peggy Wilson. Have a happy Easter and a wonderful day. Happy Easter. Kelsey, happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Happy Easter from the Shooter family. Hello. We want to wish you a very happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy Easter from the Petersons. We hope you are well and have a fantastic Easter Sunday. Hi everyone, this is Mark. This is Allie. And a big shout out because we miss our church friends and Sunday school friends and big hello to Elvis from Sunday school. Hey, and I'm missing my UMW buddies. I also miss seeing Lori and Lisa and Scott and Jennifer every week. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. Happy Easter, Easter from, from the, the stocks. stocks. One, two, three. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. Happy Easter from the Newmans. We miss everybody and we wish we could all be together, but we need to stay safe. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter from, from the Landons. Good morning. He has risen. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Christ, Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. He's risen, He's risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hello, sending warm Easter blessings and Easter greetings to everyone. Missing our church family. Cannot wait to see you again in service. Happy Easter. He is risen. Happy Easter, friends. Welcome to Easter Sunday morning worship. I'm Reverend Jennifer Finley, our Momentum and Discipleship Pastor, and it is a joy to be gathering this morning, even if it looks a little bit different this morning. Good morning and happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day. My name is Scott Beard. I'm the lead pastor here at First and I Methodist Church in Kirksville, and I pray that you're having a joyous Easter morning. And as we begin worship this morning, I'd invite you, wherever you happen to be, to find a candle or a source of light and to uh, light that candle as we acknowledge that the risen Christ is with us this morning, as we acknowledge that hope and that joy and that peace this morning. And as we join our voices together, even though we can't hear each other, we are going to say, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. So let's do that. Welcome to put that in the comments on the Facebook if you'd like to. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Friends, this morning as we gather, we are affirming that we are not alone that we believe in a God of love and resurrection power who is active, a God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in this God today. We affirm that we are called to be the church, not the church gathered, but the church dispersed and to spread God's love. We affirm that we are called to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, now I'd like to invite you to sing along with a historic Easter hymn that was written by one of the founders of Methodism. Charles Wesley wrote these words, Christ the Lord is risen today. Let's sing at the top of your lungs 
The only people that will hear is your family, and they've heard you in the shower before, I'm sure. Amen. Here we go. Christ I just want to say happy Easter to all of my awesome children and youth. Um, we haven't had any quality time together in the same room, but I have loved our Zoom chats and our Zoom meetings and our scavenger hunts. It has been so much fun. On this Easter day, I want us to celebrate those things. Celebrate the joy that Jesus puts in our heart. Celebrate the light that you are. And remember, this Easter may be different but this Easter is still celebrating the same thing, the gift that God gave us, and he is always going to be with us. So I'm gonna read a prayer with you. I'll ask that you bow in prayer with me, and then I'm gonna wish you an amazing Easter with your family making memories. This special prayer at Easter time is coming to convey the hope that all God's love and grace will light your Easter day. May you continue to live in the joy and the grace of our Lord. Just remember that Easter doesn't change. Things that we're doing lately might, but Easter is always the same, and God loves you each and every day. As we enter into a time of prayer on this Easter Sunday morning, we invite you into these familiar candles as we offer words of prayer that aren't our own, words that someone else has written to give voice to our praises in this season and also our laments and also our griefs, and also our prayers for folks. So we invite you into this time of prayer. Praise be the nurses and doctors, every medical staff bent over flesh to offer care for lives saved and lives lost, for showing up either way. Praise for the farmers tilling soil planting seeds so food can grow, an act of hope, if ever there was. Praise for the janitors and the garbage collectors, the grocery store clerks and the truck drivers barreling through long, quiet nights. Give thanks for bus drivers, delivery persons, postal workers, and all those keeping an eye on water, gas, and electricity. Blessings on our leaders making hard choices for the common good, offering words of assurance. Celebrate the scientists working a way to understand the thing that plagues us, to find an antidote, all the medicine makers. 
Praise be the journalists keeping us informed. Praise be the teachers finding new ways to educate children from afar and blessings on parents holding it together for them. Blessed are the elderly and those with weakened immune systems, all those who worry for their health, praise for those who stay at home to protect them. Praise for the poets and the artists, the singers and the storytellers, all those who nourish with words and sound and color. Blessed are the ministers, the therapists of every kind, bringing words of comfort. Blessed are the ones whose jobs are lost, who have no savings, who feel fear of the unknown, gnawing. Blessed are those in grief, especially who mourn alone. Blessed are those who have passed into the great night. Praise for police and firefighters, paramedics, and all who work to keep us safe. Praise for all the workers and caregivers of every kind. Praise for the sound and notifications, messages from friends reaching across the distance. Give thanks for laughter and kindness. Praise be our four-footed companions who with no forethought or anxiety Respond only in love. Praise for the seas and rivers, forests and stones who teach us to endure. Give thanks for your ancestors, for the wars and plagues that they endured and survived. Their resilience is in your bones and in your blood. Blessed is the water that flows over our hands and the soap that helps keep them clean each time a baptism. Praise every moment of stillness and silence so new voices can be heard. Praise the chance at slowness. Praise be the birds who continue to sing, the sky awake each day. Praise for the primrose poking yellow petals from dark earth. Blessed is the air clearing overhead so one day we can breathe deeply again. What would you add? What prayers do you add? What blessings do you add as we light a candle now for all of our unspoken prayers? and petitions and praises. And when this is passed, May we say that love spread more quickly than any virus ever could. May we say this was not just an ending, but also a place to begin. With these candles lit, we begin our journey of resurrection as we hear the resurrection story in a new way today.
Early in the morning, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb, the place where they had put Jesus' body. Perhaps she came still trying to hold in the tears, to hold it all together. Perhaps she came with the tears falling, not wiping them away. Perhaps she came weary and exhausted, numb from all that had happened. She came alone to the tomb that morning, perhaps looking for some time, some peace, to make sense of it all, to sit quietly. As she approached the tomb, she knew something wasn't right. She saw that the stone that was there to seal the tomb, to protect the body, was gone. And perhaps in that moment, the tears fell, perhaps her heart raced, perhaps there was fear and anxiety. What had happened? Had they taken the body? And no longer wanting to be alone, she ran. She ran to tell the others. She ran and told them they have taken the body and we don't know where they have put it. God was in the move on that moment. There were the seeds of hope, but there was also fear and anxiety and worry. They have taken the body. We don't know where they have taken it. It was still early in the morning when Mary got back from the tomb. And when she said to us that they had taken the Lord and she did not know where they had laid him, Peter and, and John, the other disciple, left immediately and they ran to the tomb. Surely Mary was mistaken. Surely something else could explain what she was saying. And the two were running together and they were they were running so fast that, that, that John was so excited he outrun Peter and he reached the tomb first. And he bent down and he looked in. And he saw the linen wrappings, the grave clothes were lying there. But there was no body. He was afraid he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, he was following him and he went straight, straight away into the tomb. And he saw the linen wrappings lying there as John had seen. And the cloth that had been on Jesus' head was not lying with the other linen, but it was rolled up in a place by itself. And Mary was right, the body of Jesus was gone. The grave clothes were there, and yet he was not. 
And why would someone who was stealing a body unwrap it from the grave clothes? Why would someone do that? Why would someone steal the body of their Lord? And then the other disciple, John, who had who'd arrived first, also went in. And he saw and he believed. He believed that Jesus was no longer there. But they did not quite understand the scriptures yet. They didn't understand about resurrection. They didn't know in their heart that Jesus had risen from the dead. But truly, his body was not there. And Peter and John, probably their heads hung low, went back to the house where the other disciples were. They returned to the house and they locked the doors because they were in fear of the Jews. They didn't know what was going to happen next. And they waited. And they waited. What are you waiting for this Easter, this year? Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. 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 Come to the garden alone, while the dew is still on the roses, and the voice I hear calling in my ear, 
the Son of God discloses. Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she bent over, and she looked inside. He was not there, but instead she saw two angels, one where his head had been and one where his feet had been. And they asked her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she told them. She told them that Jesus was not there. And as she did that, she turned around. When Jesus was standing there, although she did not know it was Jesus, she thought it was the gardener. And she said, Sir, would you tell me where they have taken him? Where is he? She wanted to take care of things herself. She wanted to be able to take his body away so she would know where it was if it had been moved. Sir, where have they taken him? And then Jesus spoke. He said her name. He said, Mary. And as he spoke, she recognized, she knew that voice. She recognized her name on his lips. And she said, Rabboni, which means teacher. She knew. She knew her Lord. And so he told her, go, go tell my brothers, go tell them the news. And so she went. I have seen the Lord. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we carry there, none of them and Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go, go to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God. And to your God. Sometimes we don't recognize Jesus at first. Sometimes we don't recognize the presence of God because we're not looking, because we're not expecting to see God in that place. Maybe especially in the places where Things seem to be dead. But that's exactly where we can expect to find God. New life, rebirth, and resurrection in the places we need it the most.
after Mary had spoken to Jesus, after she had seen him and experienced him in the flesh, she recognized him. And Mary ran again to find the others, bearing witness to the resurrection, telling them boldly, I have seen the Lord. Amen. Well, today is Easter Sunday, as you know, the day of resurrection, the day we celebrate that Jesus conquered both sin and death, that he went, was taken to the cross on the, what we call Good Friday and died and was put in the grave. And on the third day, he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And so we celebrate that each and every Sunday when we get together to worship, we celebrate the fact that we serve a risen Lord a Lord who has conquered both sin and death. And we live in a resurrected life. Our lives are not what they could have been without our, without our Savior. I often compare this to the idea of planting a seed in the ground. And Jesus uses this metaphor many times. He talks about the fact that a seed dies and yet from that springs many new, many new plants. This idea of resurrection in our life. And we're called to live a resurrected life, a life that's been made new. A life that's made new through the love and grace of Jesus Christ. And so the message through, from Easter, the one that I hope you keep in your hearts each and every day of the year, that we are called to be an Easter people. We are called to be a people of hope, a people of, of love and concern for others, but also people that know that we are loved by our Savior and that we can continue to show that love to others as we live that new life that's promised on Easter Day. Amen. Amen. And friends, that is our challenge this week as we go into this Easter season. Even in this odd other season that we're living through, it is indeed an Easter season. And our challenge is to say to each other and to our world, I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. And so I invite you this week to share together those times when you have experienced new life from the ashes. Those times where new life has emerged from places of hopelessness. I imagine we can all think of those. So I invite you to be bold in sharing those memories. They may be long past or they may be fresh ones, but those memories of resurrection, share them with somebody. It might start with sharing them with God, with yourself, but I invite you to be bold and share them with somebody in your life. For that is how we proclaim the resurrection. That is how we live as Easter people. For we know, we deeply know the power of the resurrection. We know that he lives. We're going to sing together another song that's we pretty much do every Easter Sunday is called He Lives.
As we depart from worship today, know that we go in the strength of the one who has raised Jesus Christ. We go in the strength of the resurrection power and hope. And now we're going to sing with joy. We invite you to sing along as we process out metaphorically into our world. Thank you. 